Dojo's Director of Marketing, Dana Brown, and today we're going to continue to build our example app. In the last chapter, we saw how to implement a hierarchical list box so the user can see the expenses uh, displayed in groups by category. But it would be great if the user of the app could also see the expenses total by category, like adding a third column to the list box. This is what we're going to do in this new chapter. So for doing that, we're going to introduce new concepts and features from the Zojo's programming language. The final app, once these changes are applied, is the one shown here, where we can see how the third column displays the total expenses on each category row. So if we expand the category, we can see how every expense under that category with the associated amount, and the third column that also displays the total by category. In fact, that value will be calculated every time the user adds new expense entries. So let's see the changes we need to make in the previous code in order to achieve this. The first thing we need to do is add a new column to the list box, so we only need to select the list box in the layout editor or in the navigator in order to access the associated inspector panel. Here, simply change the column count entry under the appearance section from 2 to 3. We also need to add a new header text for the third column. Click on the pen associated with the initial value entry and write total by category, adding a tab character before it. Remember that the tab character is the one used as the separator for each header entry in the list box. Next, let's see a new Zojo language feature. This is the model, module item that we can add to a Zojo project the same way we do with classes, properties, or any other item. A module is a collection of property items, usually methods, properties, and constants. Some of its uses are grouping common stuff under the same namespace, making the contained items global. It also creates a kind of your own library, so you can use the contained functionality on multiple projects. When the included functionality is made global, that means that you'll be able to access it from any part of your app's code. So if we add a new method to a module and make it scope global, we'll be able to call that method from any UI component, class, etc. However, when we add methods to any object and set its scope as private, then such method can only be called from the class or any other item that, it, that contains it. For example, because the save data method has a private scope, that means it can only be called from the personal expenses window. Of course, it's up to you to set the scope on the items that you want to add to a module, but most of the times, you want to make many of these global. The second feature of the language that we want to introduce in this chapter is the extends keyword. When used in a method definition, that keyword allows us to extend the functionality of the data type following the keyword. That is, like if we, it would be acting as a new method to an existing class without needing to access the source code of the extended class itself. Once done, we'll be able to use that method with the extended class using the dot notation as if the method would have originally been added to the class. This is what we've done here, and a module is the perfect place to add class extension methods. As you can see here, the extends keyword is the first word in the method signature, and the first parameter is an array of expense items. So our add expenses method will extend these arrays, and it will be displayed among the suggestions offered by the autocomplete help in the code editor. As you can see here, once the method has been added to the module with its scope set to global, we can start using it from the total by category method added to the personal expenses window, and we'll use the dot notation as we would do with any other method that was originally available for the array. In fact, the code in the total by category method is responsible for calculating the total expenses by category. For that, the code iterates all the entries in the categorized expenses dictionary. And remember that we use it for storing the array with all of the expenses for the given category that is in the definition, the key of the dictionary. On each iteration, we retrieve the array stored for that key and assign to it the local expenses variable. 
And then we simply need to call our add expenses method on the array itself in order to retrieve the total of the expenses for that particular category. Lastly, we iterate the list box to find the row that matches the key value. That is the category text, adding the total value on the third column of the list box. So with the add expenses and total by category methods in place, we only need to call the last one from the open event handler. But we also need to call this method every time the user adds a new expense entry to the list box. So we need to add the call to the method in the action event handler for the add button button. In fact, we only need to add the call to the total by category method before the line where we set the selected index of the category combo item. We also need to add code in the compare rows event handler from the items list box control. So the user can sort the third column when they click on the column header. As you can see here, we simply added a new block that will be executed when the user clicks on the second column. Also, the executed code is similar to the one executed when the user clicks on the first column, something we will improve in the next chapter. And that's all we need to do in order to add that new feature to our app. And we introduce the use of modules and the class extension methods. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.